Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. And the woman finally speaks and she says, As the Lord your God lives, 
have nothing big, only a handful of flour and a jar and a little oil and a jug, and I'm going home now to prepare something so that my son and I may eat it and die. Well, she didn't know it yet, God was providing for this woman's needs. Now, the first words out of her mouth, as the Lord your God lives, indicates that she did know about worship of the one true God. The worship of the one true God influenced those around the nation of Israel, those places where Jews may have traveled. So she knew about the one true God, and when Elijah tells her, do not fear, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. What is her response? She believes, and she obeys. She believes, and she obeys. Maybe her faith was frail, maybe it was tattered, But she believed the word of God that came through the mouth of Elijah. And she obeyed and God rained down his blessings upon her. God miraculously provided for her and for Elijah through this incredible, miraculous story of the jar of flour that never ran out and the jug of oil that never ran dry. God provides for their needs. She provided for these two poor people who cast themselves upon God, trusting in His mercy that He would provide for their needs. There's another story of the widow in our Gospel lesson this morning. Jesus has just finished castigating the scribes for their pride and their arrogance. They knew the Scriptures inside and out. They should have been the great examples of humility and faith. And yet they were very poor examples indeed. Actually, the one who is the good example is the poor widow who comes up in our story. And after Jesus finished criticizing the scribes, he sits down to take a breather. And he starts watching people put their money in the money boxes. Now we know from the Mishnah, ancient book written by Jewish rabbis, that there were 13 such offering boxes in the temple court that you could go and put your money into and they were in the shape of a trumpet. And Jesus watches rich people put in large amounts of money, huge sums. And then she sees, he sees this poor widow put in two small copper coins one sixty-fourth of a day's wage. It's difficult to translate that into modern currency, but maybe a dollar, maybe two. All she had to live on. And when Jesus sees this, he calls his disciples to him, he points something out, he says, this woman gave more than all those who came before her. For they gave out of their abundance, but she Gave all she had to live. She was someone with humble faith in God. She was someone who was dependent totally on God. Now, do you think God was going to provide for her needs? You bet. Just as He provided for the needs of the widow of Zarephath, we can imagine that God wonderfully provided for this woman's needs. Friends, the fact is, God provides for our needs today. God provides for our needs today. We need not worry, we need not be anxious, as Scripture says. God does want us to pray and seek Him and ask Him for whatever we wish. But we can believe, like the widows, that God will provide for the needs of His children. And as believers, we are His children. In our beloved small catechism, we confess. When we meditate on it, we believe. When we read it, that God provides for our needs. And we do this with the Apostles' Creed, the first article. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that He has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, 